We're going to go ahead and bring this into Photoshop. Right click, edit in. Edit in Photoshop is my preferred way to go about it. And this is just the default uh, photography workspace. And we're looking pretty good. I, I tend to go to uh, a, dark, a dark gray on here. That's the interface that I like. When you are shooting a lot of dark imagery, it's helpful to see it on a dark background. Um, same, same goes for the way you present your images on the website. If you have lots of dark imagery, don't put it on a white background because it blows out the contrast to the eyes and it makes it very difficult to see what you're looking at. Uh, whereas uh, if I were to put this on a light background, um, it, obviously it just it looks different. So uh, see if we go to oh, white, this looks very different to the eye than this, right? And so it just helps when you're, when you're working on that format. Don't shoot yourself in the foot visually um, with people who are looking at your work. If you have lots of light images, use a white background. If you have lots of dark images, use a dark background, and it'll help with the presentation a lot. All right, so uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of cleanup first, and I'm going to kind of show you basically how to approach this from a relatively speedy perspective. Um, so again, we're bringing it into Photoshop. Uh, we're going to talk about this in the speeding up Photoshop class a little bit, but approach the image as non-destructively as possible. Photoshop has this great ability to basically work like a stackable set of transparencies, where the topmost layer is visible, and uh, if at all possible, avoid duplicating unnecessary information. So back, back in the day, uh, we used to duplicate the background layer for cleanup. I personally feel that this is unnecessary. And it's unnecessary because most of what Photoshop tools are now capable of doing, uh, the healing tool, spot healing tool, clone stamp, is you can work on a blank layer with them. And if you're working on a blank layer with them, you're not duplicating the background layer. And if you're not duplicating the background layer, you're saving yourself a lot of space. A lot of space. For example, this image right here is 300 meg. If I duplicate it, it goes to 585 just by duplicating the background layer. That's big. If I'm at 292 and I create a new blank layer, the size didn't change. And so if you can work non-destructively, it's going to make your file smaller, and it's going to make Photoshop less weighted down by how, you, uh, how you're working. My files are huge when I'm working on a big, complicated image. It's not unusual when you're shooting um, you know, a 50-some megapixel camera, I mean, 10, 15 gigs for an image by the time it's all edited and, and finished. It's, it's a hog for the system. So anywhere I can, save, uh, I can save space, anywhere I can save speed, it's going to be very helpful to me. And so I'm a big fan of when I'm doing my cleanup work, I do it on a new blank layer instead of a duplicated background layer. It's a little bit unnecessary. And it used to, it used to be necessary. Um, the healing tool, uh, clone stamp, you used to have to do them on, on a layer. You don't anymore. And so just create a new background layer. Now the only thing that's really slightly different is the patch tool, which you can use non-destructively, but it's not, not the same. It's not, not great. But I, I'm not a big user of the patch tool uh, anyway, personally. Um, there is one other thing that I like to use that does require me to work on a pixel-based layer, and I'm usually pretty confident in this step, doing it on the background layer. Um, it's, it's very slight. If I run into an instance where I've got, you can kind of see this tiny sliver of a flag over on the left-hand side, right? See that right there? Uh, what, I, what I like to do, and you have to do this, on, the, on a pixel based layer. So I could duplicate the background, but I generally know that I'm not ever going to, to fix this, is what I'll do is I'll make a selection, and I go to my fill dialog, which you can get to by going to shift delete, and I fill with content aware. And what this does, this is kind of like the patch tool, um, but it just kind of guesses the information based on a selection. And it usually does a pretty good job. I mean, it's not the most amazing thing in the world. So sometimes you may have to come in and fix it. 
Uh, but generally speaking, it's, it's pretty good. So see right now you can see that it's set for current layer. I would want to change this to either current and below or all layers. Same with the spot healing, sample all layers, and the regular healing, current and below. So I use this all the time non-destructively so I can use it on a blank layer. Okay, so what I'll do here on this blank layer is I'll just do my little sample point and I just kind of eat it into it and that will fix any weird issues that I have. You may also find that you can just take a little selection on an instance like this because there's not really a huge amount of stuff happening over there. I just make a little marquee selection, hit Command T for free transform and you just go and drag that right over and that will uh, also help you hide any weird issues. So if you look at the, the absolute before, it was kind of here, and so I just kind of transformed it over and stretched the side without touching the face. And you can just stretch the sides a little bit and fix little background elements pretty easily. I actually don't mind the, uh, the little fill in over there, so I'm gonna leave it. Now on this step, I'm gonna also come back in and I'm going to get anything that I want to clean up. So like I've got like some little, little stray hairs I'm going to come through and fix. And what I'm using right here is the spot healing tool um, because generally speaking, it's fine. It's, it's pretty good. It's good for speed. Um, that's a button. And I'm just going to kind of work through and fix some of these little areas in terms of what I want to keep, what I don't. Um, some little things that are distracting, like these little one-off hairs that just kind of stick off, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of those. Generally speaking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep most of this. I like, I like the character. I'm just going to get some, some little, little distractions taken care of. And this step may be massive for you. It may be very, very quick. It depends on the subject matter. It depends what you are uh, working to achieve. But usually, it's not super crazy uh, complicated for me. Uh, you may find that you want to lighten up some of these things or, or, or not. It's, it's really a matter of, of personal, personal taste. So I'm just going to kind of work through here and clean up a few different elements, not too much. So here's a button that you can kind of see part of. I don't love it, so I'm just going to remove the highlights and I think it'll be less distracting. And I think that looks a little bit better. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. Um, pretty happy with it in terms of the cleanup. Again, not too, too much. A little bit, right? Uh, there, is, there is one little thing that I, I, I do tend to do from time to time. Is I like to make sure that I get a catch light in both eyes. And you just happen to be you know, kind of making that, that little emotive expression and it kind of blocked the light from hitting this eye. So what I'm gonna do is grab the regular healing tool, not the spot healing, the regular. I'm gonna sample this catch light. I'm just gonna bring it right over. See that? And that just adds a little bit of sparkle to both eyes. And I like the effect of that. So I'm, I'm usually a big proponent of making sure I get the catch light in both eyes and I just copy it over. The, the healing tool is a great, easy way to do that. Some people like to do the clone stamp. Some people like to copy and paste. This is like super easy, just and it works, um, brings it over quite nicely.